Well, I'm joined by Dr. Alice Sullivan, who's Professor of Sociology at the Institute of Education at University College London. Um, Dr. Sullivan, what do you think of Gillian's point there, that what the Education Secretary is trying to do is to rebrand grammar schools to make them more palatable to their critics? I think that's a very good point, and this idea of saying that grammar schools are open to all, really it's a bit of a nonsense because by their very definition they are selective. Traditionally they were for the top 20% and the bottom 80% of kids, going back to the 1950s, weren't supposed to be too worried about them, they were going to leave, leave school without qualifications and go and get a job in a factory or something. So it seems very strange to be harking back to that now. Um, the idea that grammar schools could be re branded as a sort of engine of social mobility is very strange given that we've got huge amounts of evidence that suggests that grammar schools do absolutely nothing to promote social mobility. The government's well aware of that evidence and they're just disregarding it. So this is so far from being evidence-based policy. It's policy that's just flying in the face of all the research evidence that we've got. I suppose supporters of grammar schools would say yes they are selective, yes they are selective by ability, but there should be a level playing field for everybody regardless of income to try to get in. And there's the rub because how on earth do you achieve that when you've got a selective exam and parents who've got the resources quite naturally are going to do everything they possibly can to get their kids into that school. So what do you do? Do you, for example, lower the pass mark for kids from less advantaged backgrounds? Which some universities are doing, for example, as part of their admissions policy. Yeah, but it's um, those kinds of details, I think, are going to be really, really interesting. And it doesn't seem as though they've been thought through or worked out yet. If you did that really substantially and said, OK, poorer kids are going to only have to achieve a much lower level in order to get in, then you can imagine all sorts of unforeseen consequences like a sort of um, just about managing stream within the grammar school where the aspirations would be far lower. So, but really in a way that's an aside because the real problem is all those kids, the majority, that aren't going to be in the grammar schools. And given that in England we've got a long-standing problem of poor basic skills, um, about 20% of adults with poor literacy skills, about 40% with poor numeracy skills, that's our problem. That's where we fare badly in international comparisons. So why isn't Justine Greening focusing on that? And um, you know, clearly grammar schools are never going to be the solution for the average kids or the below average kids because they aren't going to those schools. Do you think that this is uh, this might have had more success as a policy and let's bit it, it's quite controversial at the moment. Do you think it would have been less controversial if this hadn't been a time of relative austerity? Possibly yes because it does seem particularly bizarre I have to say right now when schools are under so much pressure we've got a shortage of school places we've got a shortage of people wanting to go into teaching and we know again from all the research evidence the biggest factor for children's learning is having good teachers regardless of the type of school that they're in so what you would expect the government to be thinking about right now is how do we get good graduates into teaching, how do we make that um, a successful profession and how do we make sure that all of our schools are successful when resources are so pinched. So to be spending money on this experiment right now is particularly odd. Okay, Dr Sullivan, many thanks. Thank you.